Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things could get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming a very talented actress from Canada, and I am talking about Natalie Radford. Natalie is one of those actresses, you know the face, not necessarily know the name, but she's extremely talented, and she should be known more. And I am talking about roles like the long-forgotten, underrated sci-fi show, Tech War. Um, she was also in a lot of uh, low-budget movies like The Android Affair, Memory Run. She guest-starred on shows like Are You Afraid of the Dark on Nickelodeon. Uh, she was in the Saturday Night Live underrated classic Superstar. And she played the English mother on Darcy's Wildlife, the Saturday morning kids show on NBC back in the mid-2000s. And it's going to be great to have her on the show today. Like I said, she's a chameleon, she's talented, and it's going to be an honor to talk to her. So yeah, here is my interview with Natalie Radford. So, going back in time, um, did you gravitate toward acting early on in your childhood? Uh, not at all. I was a complete tomboy. Nice. So, uh, yeah. No, I, I really, really wanted to be a boy. And I, I think, you know, nowadays there's so many... Um, more options that way as far as how you identify so I think I would have you know in today's world they would have you know in my when I was growing up I was called a tomboy but you know maybe I was you know gender neutral or something I, I don't know I just really identified as male um, when I was uh, when I was tiny Wow so what was your early career trajectory um, well, I went to the University of Guelph for theater and visual arts. I was very split down the middle um, because art has always been uh, very, a very, very important thing in my life. And um, and then I, I really wanted, after I, I went to the University of Guelph in London, England, and we lived in Camden Town and all of our studies were in like art galleries like the Tate Museum and the National and after that I just wanted to travel mm -hmm. um, and be a flight attendant <laughs> <laughs> so um, but you know alas I, I, I did stick to my education and at Guelph I got on stage quite early in my university career and I absolutely hated it so I thought, okay, well, I definitely don't want to be an actor. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd also studied dance. So I was like, okay, well, I'll, I'll do dance. So then I went to Ryerson for dance for a year, and then I helped uh, start uh, a dance company that has been going for 30 years now. Nice, nice. Wow, that's, yeah. really, that's great. So I really wasn't planning on being an actress. Were you dancing at all when you were growing up? Not at all. Not at all. I wish, but no, I kind of found it myself around 16, um, so started very late, mm -hmm. and how the acting happened was I had about four jobs as a dancer, and uh, a friend of mine that I went to high school with said, you know, Nat, let me take your pictures, you could do commercials, you don't have to work so hard, so I did that, and then I got an agent, and... Um, they were looking for an actress who could dance. So, you know, paths and doors open. And uh, that was my first role. And I realized I really did love acting, but had to be on film, not on stage. Because I actually don't, I'm, I'm not that kind of actress. I don't, I don't get off on um, the audience's energy and all that. I prefer to just be one of a whole bunch of people doing and making something, if that makes sense. It does make sense, yeah. Wow, that's so cool that you're a tomboy. I've been hanging out with tomboys my whole life. <laughs> yeah, I, I really resisted uh, wearing a top till my mom said I had to. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I think um, I think tomboys get shunned by girly girls. I really do think so. Well, all my cousins are boys, and I like sports, and I was just more comfortable around them. Barbies were the weirdest inventions ever. You know, they were hard and cold, and they had these breasts, and just nothing about it appealed to me at all. I just thought it was really ridiculous, and their knees cracked, and <laughs> they were really creepy. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So, um, the first movie listed on your IMDb is Tomcat, Dangerous Desires. Yes. That is a very, very bad movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but, that was, that was one of my first, that was the one I was talking about where I was a dancer, so, um, we worked with a really cool choreographer in Vancouver called Kokoro Moon, and it was supposed to be Richard because they had come back, and all this jazz, and, you know, um, come on, Esme, um, yeah, so, I mean, it was a great experience, I was highly, highly underpaid, yeah, um, yeah, and, uh, worked my butt off, and, you know, it's not a great experience, but, you know, it's, me a pretty ridiculous, laughable piece of film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can be very candid about these things now. <laughs> oh, I want you to be candid, yes. <laughs> yeah, this is what they call an exploitation... I'm not, not. Huh? Go ahead. I was going to say, this is what they call an exploitation film. Um, I've talked to a lot of actresses who are ashamed of the exploitation films they did because... They said it, it really lives up to its name. There's a lot of exploitation going on behind the scenes. But uh, you didn't have an experience like that, did you? I didn't. I was a bit of an odd duck that way because I think I one of my jobs um, was as a figure model at um, OCAD. And I just grew up very, very comfortable around nudity. Mm-hmm. You know, one of my jobs was to pose naked for artists. And um, so for me to do nudity, it just really wasn't a big deal. I didn't feel exploited. I was like, I'm choosing to do this. Um, So I always felt very empowered in that way. Um, You know, some people maybe didn't. Well, I'm sure if people judge me, I don't, I don't really care about that. Yes. I definitely was judged by certain certain people. Um, but I, no one, no one ever really crossed the line with me um, yeah. in that way. Um, I can't, I can't say that I, I experienced that. I mean, there was, there was people who were, who would say like make inappropriate comments. Yeah. In auditions and things like that, but I just, you know, I just thought they were ridiculous. You know, like, they would never, I would never get in a compromising position, and I just feel absolutely huge, huge empathy for any women that that did get in a compromised uh, position, you know? Yeah. And um, it absolutely is not their fault. And I just feel really fortunate that um, that I wasn't. Yeah, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, God, I've heard stories. Trust me, I've heard a lot of stories about that kind of stuff. Uh, but how was uh, working with Richard Grieco? Um. Well, <laughs> I think because I came from a dance background, dancers are. You know, they're, they're really disciplined, and it's really about the work. And every time, you know, we were, we were in Vancouver for about a month ahead of production, and every time we would go out with the director, you know, I'd bring my script, you know, and yeah. I was ready to work. And it was never about that. It was about hanging out and being social, and I just, I just didn't understand it. I was like, okay, this is fine, but, like, when are we going to get to the work? Um... Uh, you know, I don't really care to say anything 
too negative about him. I just don't want to put that energy out there. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, it was okay. It was okay. He was at a point in his career where, um, you know, there was a lot of um, ego around an image. That's what I'll say. Right, yeah. That's what I've heard and from I can't, people. That can't be easy either, you know? Like, I wouldn't, you know? Yeah. I wouldn't want to trade it, you know? So... Right. Yeah, I've heard that about yeah. him uh, when he was on 21 Jump Street. Yeah, he kind of got that ego um, thing that going on. Power trip, as they call. Um, do you remember guest starring on Are You Afraid of the Dark? Um, I have a really cool story about that. Um, mm -hmm. Someone found me on Instagram. I mean, I certainly remember doing the project. Um, but someone found me on Instagram and, uh, and he said that I was the inspiration for him going into, um, animation, which I thought was, you know, uh, very sweet, but misplaced because. Mm -hmm. Character that the writers had created, but his artwork was unbelievable like full-on claymation like like he specialized in in uh in horror claymation and this kid was so talented like crazy talented so that was just that was kind of cool that was a cool connect yeah that is pretty cool to um have your likeness you know um put out on uh, paper like that oh well no he didn't he didn't uh he didn't do a portrait of me it was because he saw that show oh okay he decided to study uh animation arts oh okay describe that correctly so. okay yeah, i was confused there for a moment yeah i heard a rumor of a uh, reboot before covid um started you know and uh yeah in in the episode uh it's a babysitter who teaches a kid that books are better than TV. I think in today's world, it would probably be teaching him that life is better than social media. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, sure. Because they're on their phones 24-7, the kids. And adults as well, you know. Yeah. Um... Do you want me to comment on that? You could. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, my son, who is 14, you know, is, is one of those generations, you know, very much on his phone and, mm -hmm. um, and on screens. And, yeah, I worry, you know, that he doesn't read. I also had a hard time getting into reading when I was younger. Um, but I've come to value the education that he is giving himself and getting. Like, it, it's also, it, it's incredible what, like, it's like this matrix that's open to them that we were never exposed to, you know? Like, when he, sometimes when he talks about certain topics, I'm like, how on earth do you know all that, you know? But he's just so rich in information so you know it's got a positive side too mm -hmm, absolutely they hate me saying that <laughs> <laughs> you got to be in a um, Spencer for Hire TV movie of the week uh, The Judas Goat how was uh, working with Robert Urich um wow that's really I remember um Fine. It was fine. He was lovely. He was a gentleman. I, I remember I had to do quite, a, you know, after the audition, I then had to go and meet with him, and you know, so there was a lot more than just auditioning, you know. But, yeah. but he was lovely. Yeah, I guess you know, obviously it all worked out. He was a gentleman, so um, yeah, it was it was fine. 
yeah, it's, it's, you know, he's probably he was probably on more series than any actor in the history of television. It would be kind of interesting to see where you know how many series he could he could have done you know to this day. You know, he'd probably be be on a, a Netflix series or something now. Right. Right. Yeah. You're probably right. Yeah, I tried to get his wife Heather Menzies on here uh, when I first started the podcast. Uh, I guess uh, the Facebook message went to spam, and then she passed away maybe about a month or two later, sadly. Oh. Yeah, she was in The Sound of Music. That would have been great to talk to her. How yeah. do, How does uh, Tech War come into your life? that I did, um, William Shatner wrote it, so I got to meet him, work mm-hmm. with him, and he, he's an incredibly dynamic person, you know, with tons of energy, um, you know, very, very specific director, um, and there was just so many changes that, the kind of interesting thing about that project was I had so much tech talk. Yeah. And so I had to, I was having such a hard time memorizing it because it was just all, you know, words and language that isn't even in your vocabulary. So then it's really hard to get it to stick in your brain. Right. So I developed uh, um, sort of hieroglyphics for myself that I would write on my scripts and I would, you know, draw out, you know, a cyber forest and a crystal matrix and, you know, these words may sound a bit more common now, but if you go back 25 years, like no one was speaking like that. And um, so that's what I did to try to give myself a visual so that my lines would come into my head easier. Um, Yeah, so that was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you think it was a good show overall? Um... I don't know. I I really wasn't a sci-fi person, so I had nothing to compare it to except maybe Star Trek. And if you <laughs> compared to Star Trek, I would say no. But um, yeah, you know, Arnold was not uh, a, a strong actor. So if you don't have someone strong at the helm, then you know it's uh, it's it's tricky. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think it was a pretty stellar show, you know, I mean, in the beginning, USA Network, when they would have original series on, they were kind of lame shows, you know, I think now because it's more corporate, they would they would uh, definitely pay more attention to the writing and stuff that, that goes on their, their channel and stuff, you know, but I think overall, yeah, it's a pretty good show, I mean, do you still get recognized for it every day? Do I still get recognized for it? Yeah. Uh, no, not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. Have you have you ever done the 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 the, the sci-fi or the comic uh, cons? Well, you know, it's interesting. I I was asked to do them when I was doing Tech War, and that was before. Yeah. That was really really a thing, and so I just kind of you know. It was sort of like, will you volunteer? And I was like, okay, you know, I'm curious to see what it was. And um, and then it was after that series that a lot of my friends who were doing sci-fi were like flown everywhere and paid money. And I was like, well, that would have been nice. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, I was just kind of ahead of that bubble. Um, yeah. How was uh, Greg Evigan to work with? sweet guy just you know uh, not such a super strong actor you know Mm -hmm. yeah I think he's one of those guys who's I I think looks you know got him to work (laughs) that's sad to say you know I mean he was on yeah it's like it's like uh, you know um, Billy Ray Cyrus you know same sort of uh, situation there you know and his daughter, <laughs> Miley Cyrus. Well, I actually think she can act quite well, you know. 
I haven't I haven't seen her act really. Is she is she pretty good as an actress? I think she's believable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You said that uh, you're. Uh, you know, th- oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. You said uh, you're not into uh, sci-fi very much. Next, uh, you you made a movie called The Android Affair. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that was actually a really cool project. I actually really liked that. Mm hmm. Harley Jane Kozak. I actually just reached out to her for an interview, and I uh, hope to hear back from her and stuff. She's very talented. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Is she good to work with? Yeah. Um, yeah, as far as I remember. Yeah. It was just a bit more of an interesting project. And, um, yeah. I had a great cast. Griffin Dunn, Ozzy Davis, Saul Rubinek. Wow, that's a that's a pretty good cast for a little movie like that. Yes. You, yeah, no, and the, the director was a super sweet guy, and... Um, I went down to L.A. and, you know, he brought me on the studio a lot and I got to watch some of the editing and, you know, that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. You did a couple, yeah. you did a couple episodes of Kung Fu, The Legend Continues. How was that? Uh, well, um... Is that a negative experience? <laughs> well, at that point... Um, David Carradine was, was, um, struggling with alcohol, so I kind of didn't really have a scene partner, and I had to come up with some pretty big stuff, because my character was suicidal and wanting to jump off a building, so, um, you know, there's, there's different challenges that you face on set, and that was my challenge, but I had a lot of really great people around me, and, um you know, kind of got through it. Um, but, you know, it gave me some tougher skin, you know, to uh, try to, you know, I've had to deal with a lot of really big personalities in my <laughs> career, you know? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people have told me that worked with David Carradine that told me just how eccentric and wild he was. And I actually got to interview his daughter, Callista, a couple of years ago, and she was on Kung Fu as well. Did you right. get, Did you meet her? No, I did not. No, I did not. Um, the the, the um, kind of cool thing about the second time I did it was um, the casting came out and the description for the character was a Natalie Radford type. Yeah. And my agent was like, well, that's weird. Why would they say that? And why don't they just hire you? And uh, so then um, so then they did. I met with the director, and he's like, yeah, maybe just actually want you to do it. So we changed you know, my hair color, and they let me do two of them, which was pretty cool of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Yeah, it's very rare yeah. nowadays. The whole the whole business is just different now, you know. It's it's more political and corporate. Is your audience mostly a sci fi audience? Horror, sci fi, just the eighties, eighties in general. Occasionally, nineties. Yeah. Oh okay. <laughs> <Fun. laughs> oh yeah. I when I started the show, it was just eighties um, horror and sci fi, and then I decided I wasn't going to limit myself. I was just going to talk to everybody and I've talked to legends from my parents time and stuff I've been very lucky oh that's great yeah so how does Superstar come into your life um I was living in LA and uh I auditioned for it and got the part (laughs) (laughs) so um yeah it was funny because I was actually recently in um, Key West and uh, I was buying a shirt for a friend and um, the guy who was selling me the shirt like did his little sniff under the arm thing and then went superstar and I was like oh that's hilarious I can't believe you just did that and he's like why do you know that movie and I was like "Mm, yeah (laughs) (laughs) 
And then, you know, so then it came out that I was in it. And he's like, no way. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, anyway, it was just kind of funny. Like, it doesn't really, you know, you know. He, he obviously... He's not to me at this point in my life, but it was just kind of a, a funny coincidence, you know? Yeah. He, he obviously didn't recognize you without your short brown hair. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So... To me, this you know, is yeah, one of I, the most underrated Saturday Night Live movies, and I think it has a great message of ignoring naysayers and following your dreams, which is what I'm doing with this podcast. Oh, well, good for you. Right. Yeah. Were you a Saturday Night Live fan? Um, yes. Yes. I didn't always get the opportunity to watch it because I was just working a lot. Um, and that was, you know, obviously back in the day when it's like, if you're not home, you're not going to see it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I thought, I thought there was some, uh, some, you know, a lot of fun to be had. And, um, I really, really enjoyed Will Ferrell. That that's what was special about that project for me. He was just such a nice guy. Yeah. And, you know, his star was just about to, you know, supernova. And uh, it, I'm just so happy to see that he's done so, so well because he was just such a sweetheart, you know, and no ego and easy to be around. And um, so to see him... Uh, you know, supernova, I just, I couldn't be happier for him. Last week, I talked to Ed Asner, and he told me that when they made uh, Elf, um, that he was just, he was cracking everybody up all day long, and that he compared him to uh, Ted Knight, who he had worked with on the Mary Tyler Moore show. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that's very cool. That's yeah. Very cool. Interesting comparison, but I thought that was pretty cool as well. Yeah. Yeah. Is is, is Elaine Hendricks nice in real life? Pardon me. Is Elaine Hendricks nice in real life? Because she plays bitches so well. <laughs> oh yeah. Um. She was nice. She was nice, but she was reserved. Yeah. She was. She was. You know. She. You know, there was quite a quite a warming up to do there, but you know that's fine. Everybody has different, you know, settings. So, um, and she does, yeah, she she absolutely does. No, oh, that's you, good. You know, good work. So, yeah. How does um, Darcy's wildlife come to you? Um. Again, just you know, audition for it. At that point, I was up in Canada, so I flew down uh, for the screen test and ended up getting the part. And um, we did that all up in Canada on a dentist farm, and it was it was fun. It was like a different animal every ep- episode. And Sarah Paxton was just such a delightful sixteen year old then, and uh, you know so so fun and funny and you know really into physical comedy and I really enjoy physical comedy as well so we kind of got on like a house on fire it was very it was very sweet yeah I remember an episode where they're showing how it takes at the end which was what they did uh you and her are like laying on a bed and like she falls off the bed and you're like laughing <laughs> <laughs> yeah there was there was a lot of laughter on that set it was a very it was a very happy set so it's really lovely when that happens, you know? Yeah. I, I love that English accent you did, too. I, I it, it took me a while to realize that uh, that, that was you, and I, I just, uh, you were so convincing with that accent. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I really enjoy doing accents. You know, they're a lot of fun. But it's sort of like, um, it's sort of like having a musical ear. You know, and you can either hear the melody of an accent or you can't, you know. I mean, you can certainly, you can certainly practice it and become better at it. But it's like if you're tone deaf, you're tone deaf, I think is the easiest way to describe it, you know. Yeah. So I think I just, I think I just have an ear for it. Can you do like Irish, Australian, Brooklyn, all the accents, Southern? Yeah, they're fun. They're fun for me to do. 
Mm-hmm. But I, just, I only speak one language, though, which is pretty sad. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You know, not everybody can speak all the Englishes. Some people can, but... It, yeah. it, it depends on the person. There was a particular episode of Darcy's Wildlife that actually impacted my life because uh, I used to watch the show when I was in my early 20s um, back in the mid-2000s. And there's an episode where uh, they're trying to teach Kathy how to be assertive. And that episode was very profound in my life because I was, in my teens and 20s, I was just a human doormat. I let so many people walk all over me. And this episode really, like, let me see the light. It took a a lot of years, but I I finally got to where I needed to be and not let people uh, push me over. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful to hear. Yeah. 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 I don't think that... um Boundaries aren't always taught, you know, and uh, I think they're really they're really important to teach. Um, I still struggle with them, you know, in uh, in having them myself, and and also not crossing other people, you know. Mm-hmm. So there's two two ways to struggle with that, you know. Yeah, it's a it's an epi- I'm, I was gonna say it's an epidemic, you know. <laughs> A boundary epidemic. <laughs> yeah, but that was a, a great show. I enjoyed it. I wish uh, it would have went on longer. And I, I, Sarah Paxton, she's out there still working. I thought she was going to be a huge star, but I think that movie she made, Aquamarine, kind of put the kibosh on it. But at least she's still working. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I haven't sort of followed up with her in, in quite a while. And she's sort of stuck in my brain as this, sweet 16 year old but she's you know obviously a full grown adult now so um yeah I should look up what she's doing <laughs> yeah and Melanie Leishman who played Kathy she was great I follow her on social media she's still working too oh that's great yeah she was very very sweet the guy who played girl. yeah the guy who played the vet Kevin Simmons he was great yes yeah he, he was a sweetheart He's a sweetheart. sweetheart. Yeah. So before COVID hit, uh, were you still acting? No, I um, I have not been acting for I'd say about at least five years now. Mm-hmm. Um, I I decided to well. First, what I did was I wanted to get behind the camera, so I uh, filmed a documentary about figure modeling, mm-hmm. and uh, it's still in the process of being, wanting to be edited. You know, I've taken a couple cracks at different editors, but, um, you know, I made the thing for zero money. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's why documentaries take 20 years to, um, to make, but um, it's just a story I really wanted to tell. And then um, I decided to uh, pursue my dream of becoming uh, a flight attendant, finally, <laughs> like from way, 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 way back in my 20s. And uh, yeah, and so that is uh, that's what I'm doing now, and I work... Um, for a company that Warren Buffett owns, and I fly on 10-seater jets, and um, it's kind of funny, because now I have flown um, Jerry Seinfeld, Reese Witherspoon, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Wow. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> it's, uh, it's really funny how, you know, I was like, mm, I'm, I thought I left this business, but it's still around me in, in just a completely different way. Um, yeah. But I really, really enjoy it. Is is that what you meant on Instagram by touring? Yes, absolutely. Because uh, I, I didn't know if it was that or you you launched a uh, singing career and we're, we're in the middle of a pandemic, so I was just I was very confused by that. Oh yeah, no, no. They well, that's the funny thing. They call them tours. Yeah. And it's funny because we have a show time. And we have a lead passenger, and it just cracks me up, the, the similarities. But the great thing is is that um, being in show business all those years really uh, 
completely prepared me for uh, for this line of work. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, because it's always changing, you have to adapt. You have to be able to read people and, you know, respond to them. So I'm just like, you know, I'm not acting anymore. I just get to be myself, but I still get to observe people, study people, interact with them and, and, you know, I don't think I'll ever stop doing that, you know, finding people completely fascinating. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, what year did you leave L.A.? Um, I went back and forth for quite a while, but I had my first daughter, Lola, in uh, 2002, mm-hmm. and that's when I was... Mm-hmm. Then when she was two years old, I did uh, Darcy's Wildlife. So probably around the time of Darcy's Wildlife, that's when I really started to uh, lay down more permanent roots up here because of my kids. Mm-hmm. If if someone came to you with an acting part, would you take it? Um, I have actually just recently had a friend approach me, um, and it. You know, it would it would really depend on the project. I, it's it's probably something I would do for friends. Yeah. Um, and you know, um, I was offered a a film a few months ago, um, which I was considering, but you know, the date didn't work out with my work schedule. So mm-hmm. it's just it's just very very. Sp- specific now for me and and I would yeah. I would be doing it for joy not for money yeah yeah I think by this point um, doing it for joy and not for money is uh, very uh, relevant because of um, your your job as a flight attendant you know because it's full-time steady work and you get to travel around the world yeah yeah and uh, as an actor <clears throat> um, like I was lucky enough to live off of it and uh, you know so that was that was great but there's just so uh, you know you don't see all the work that actors do preparing um, Mm -hmm. for auditions and all the jobs that they prepare for that they don't get you know and then that's just kind of free work as it were you know it's part of the job but it's also that when you get a job you're paid really well and I never had a problem for that because you know if you weighed out all the hours that you had spent uh, rehearsing learning lines auditioning traveling to auditions and all those jobs that people don't see that you don't get you know um, it it all evens out (laughs) (laughs) actors work very very hard for their money oh yes Um, yeah yeah well, that is so wonderful, Natalie. I, I thank you for coming on today and um, sharing a little bit about your acting career and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's funny. Whenever I sometimes when I when I approach people who left the business, you know, they're a little at they're a little. Um, on the fence about you know talking about their about their about their past acting work and stuff like that. To me, people who who left the industry are more in, are more interesting than the people who stayed in it. <laughs> well, I mean, I just don't. I try not to have any ego attached to it anymore. So, um, you know, I'm just another human on the planet, and that's one job that I had and a career I had and if it brought some people some joy that's awesome or if it brought them laughter even better um and uh yeah and now I'm doing a completely different thing and I I I guess that's what I would want people to know that it's like don't be if you know don't be afraid to change your life or or do more than one thing or if you really have another another dream another passion you know go for it you know like don't don't be stuck i don't think we should ever be stuck and so um i just actually tried to help my cousin because she really wants to be a flight attendant and so we're trying to you know um you know help her follow her dream i think i think if you really pursue what you love and what you're passionate about you know doors and paths they open for you, but you have to, you can't just sit there and hope for it and dream for it. Like you have to be oh, no. active. And, 
So I guess that's what I'd like to I, put out there, you know? Yeah, you know, like I... You did, like you did with your podcast, and, you know, there you go. So it's nice to contribute to you doing your passion, even though I totally, you know, we don't know each other. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, certain guests, they, they talk to me like I've known them their whole lives, you know, and I try not to do that even though I've known their, their work my whole lives, you know, but, you know, certain people, it just, you know, it clicks, you know, but uh, really quickly going back to what you were saying, yeah, I wait, I was waiting around waiting for it to happen for years and I worked in jobs I did not like. I was a security guard, I worked in retail and I was not happy. Um um, just uh, sitting around waiting for show business to happen, you know, while I, while I was uh, an open mic comedian and acting on stage. And then my car accident happened five years ago. And then three years ago, I started this podcast because I had seen, you know, the light from my accident. Oh, okay. And wow, well, good for you. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, that's very inspiring that you say that, you know, you got to put yourself out there and work hard and do it now. Don't wait, you know, and I, I was given a second chance and I'm running with it. <laughs> oh, that's so wonderful. Well, good for you. Thank you so much, Natalie. Yeah. So. You're welcome. So please stay safe because we need you and. Take care of your children during this scary, scary time, and be safe at, well, while you're um, while you're flying around the world because we don't know when this okay. is going to end. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't like I don't you know promote myself or you know uh, do any of that anymore. But if you know if anyone wants to follow me, you know um, my Instagram handle is. Natalie.radford.982 and I don't know I just I try to um, show where I go sometimes I like to show art and mm -hmm. so if that if that brings pleasure to anyone great or not you know I'm just throwing that out there wonderful wonderful well it's almost night over there so have a great night over there Natalie thank you so much okay you're so welcome take care take care bye bye Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Natalie Radford. Ain't she a sweetheart? Oh, what a great, humble lady. And I'm glad she found a new dream, a new old dream that she can act on. And I hope to see her on the screen, you know, when she's doing it as a hobby in the future after this craziness is over. Um, if you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, add me as a friend on Facebook, join my Tommy Kovac Comedian page on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past, because the present sucks. Later, dudes!